Hey, this little video is going to be about making some gears. I've got a um, friend that I work with. I've worked with him for many years. He's bought himself a second-hand um, Chinese lathe, just like my Hefco Metal Master. And when he purchased it second-hand, it was missing um, three of the change gears for the uh, for thread cutting. Um, he is missing a 30 tooth, two 50s, and a 60, a 60 tooth. So I've measured these up, and the bore of these is three quarter. Um, anything else I can measure on them seems to be imperial. So, so far, all of the um, gear teeth combinations I've looked at um, points to say that these are diametral pitch, they're not metric, they're imperial uh, pitch gears and there are some really cool online calculators now instead of sitting there doing all the maths and figuring out the pressure angles and all these things on gears now you can um, especially on an even numbered tooth gear where you can easily pick up an exact opposite tooth um, and measure the diameter of these um, there's quite a lot of online calculators now where you just type punch in that outside diameter and tell it how many teeth and it will tell you the likelihood between this being a diametral pitch gear or a metric gear, which would be module, um, is the way that's designated. So in this case, you'd measure here, type in that diameter, and, the res and tell how many teeth, and the result of the website would tell you um, there is a 99% chance this is a diametral pitch 20 being imperial, and it might say it's a 40% chance of being... Um, 1.25 module so if you do enough of the gears if you've got samples which makes it really easy um, if you've got samples you can just keep measuring all of these and just keep punching them into those online calculators and it really takes the guesswork out of figuring out if it's metric or imperial but like I say the bores of these are imperial it looks like the outside diameters of these are imperial and it looks like to be diametral pitch so this type of gear is called a spur gear um, the way the tooth is shaped, um, it's just mathematical. It's, it's the relationship between how they mesh and roll together. Um, as they come together, the projected path of the meshing um, results in an envelope, which gives you the, the shape of the tooth. Um, gears are supposed to roll together, not actually like slide as the teeth come together so you can imagine um, you know it's a bit hard with the camera they're not supposed to skid in like this they're actually supposed to roll on each other as they as they come in and out so probably not a good example but um, that's that's how gears are supposed to work um, when you're gear cutting to make things easy um, you can buy gear cutter sets and you can buy fairly inexpensive sets of uh, gear tooth cutters off eBay from China um, I bought a set of these because I didn't have diametral pitch 20. Um, so for about uh, 90 or or $100 Australian, you get um, a whole set of gear tooth cutters. We'll just get them in the picture. But the ones for these are these three. So I'll just explain this a little bit. Move all this out of the way. Like you can see that there's a whole set here. I we'll won't open them up. But I've opened these, so let's go back to the start. There's one there. And another one here. Another one here. So there's three. Three out of the set which I've chosen. So like I say, I, I'm pretty sure this is DP20 or diametral pitch 20. Um, this is a set of the right cutters for DP20 or diametral pitch 20 to cut these. Um, We'll start with this one. I've got a number five out, a number six, and a number seven. So the number five, I'll just wipe the lube off it. We can get it in the picture. Um, you can see there, so it says DP20, uh, 14 degrees, which would be the pressure angle. 14 and a half, I should say, 14 and a half degrees. This is the number five of the set, and number five, the Z is how many teeth, so you can see Z26 to 34. 
So this this two this this little cutter here will cut any diametral pitch spur gear with the number of teeth that um, this cover this cutter covers. This will cut but anything between a 26 tooth gear and a 34 tooth gear. So you can imagine as the gear gets rounder and rounder, um, the envelope changes. So if I had a tiny little gear like this running on a massive gear, imagine this gear here was like a meter round or something like that. Um, this The tooth profile of this would have to be different to this one um, because this is like a star, a radiating spur, a radiating star. The, um, the mesh up would have to be a different shape on this to the shape of this to be able to get um, a proper rolling um, neat mesh. You know, if these were exactly the same um, gear tooth shape and these were radically two different size gears, that, that wouldn't work. So um, with gear cutters, like I said, um, that number five, that number five cutter, 26 to 34. So here I've got a 30 tooth, if it'll focus, a 30 tooth cutter. Um, this would be the cutter that would hog out, I'm doing this upside down so I can flat out see it. This cutter would hog out those teeth. Index around, next one, index around, next one, next one, next one. As this is spinning, that would be that one. Uh, the next one up is the six. This one will cut Let's see, this one will cut a 35 to 54 tooth gear. Like I said, the Z designates the number of teeth. So 35 to 54 is me 50 tooth. So that would be the shape of that one. So that's the cutter for that. And then the last one we've got, which is um, in this for to cut these gears I'm talking about. So this one is, where are we? 55 teeth to 134 teeth and in this case this is a 60 a 60 tooth spur gear so that would be the cutter to cut those so pretty straightforward and then you can imagine um, in this series once you get more than a um, hundred and 134 so 134 and above the next cutter up so the number eight cutter would cut Everything from um, 134 all the way out to, you can imagine a gear as it's getting rounder and rounder and rounder. This will cut from 134, sorry, the next the next cutter up, which I think I've got on the top of the pole right here, ready to go actually. Let's see. No, I don't. So it's in the pile, but the next cutter up would cut um, rack. So for rack and pinion. So the envelope opens out that much, or I should say the diameter opens out that much, so the next cutter would cut from 135 teeth all the way out to infinity, which would be a flat line, and that's that's gear rack. So that's that explained, I guess. There's all the um, teeth, the sorry, the cutters that I need. The three out of the set of eight um, is all I require for this job. The other ones um, stay wrapped up in the preservative. And then um, I've gone out to my metal stash and got an appropriate amount of material. So I'm pretty sure this is 4140. It's a drop that I've had left over from um, a little job. So that one is going to be cut out of that with that cutter. Um, the next one I've got is a bigger piece of 4140. And that's going to be this one here, I'll get two of them out of that, so I've got to make two of these 50 tooths. And then the last slug I've got is another drop, which will be the 60 tooth cutter. And I'll get that out of there without too much waste. And there's the cutter. Alright, so um, let's get into it. I got the smallest piece in the four jaw dialed up. I sandblasted them all quickly just to get all the rust off so that all the rust dust doesn't go all over the lathe. Makes a mess, so it's nice and easy to clean up later. Alright, let's get going.
So 40.09, spot on. And this measures 40.09. Bang on. It's time to make the two 50 tooth gear blanks. Now we use this bit of material here and we won't have much waste. 